Okay, so now we've got our marked up chart. We've got our capo on the fifth fret, and we're going to play the song in G, just so we have something different. And we're going to use the Waves guitar plugin again, but we're going to create our own sound. I'm just going to show you how. Um, so I'm going to go to the EGT track right here, and I'm going to make a new track so it puts it right next to it because I like my tracks in order. Um, Command Shift N, anything in blue, I do want a mono track, anything in blue, hit return, bam. Okay, I'm going to double click to name it, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Because the thing is, if I name it later, it's going to name my audio track, whatever the name of the track is. So if I keep audio one and I record the guitar, then I come back and name the track new EGT one, it's not going to rename the audio region. So it's the best habit to get into is the minute you create a new track, name it. So I'm going to call this new EGT1. All right, so I'm going to command equal to get to the mix screen. Um, I put my mouse effect on so you can see this. The other guitar effect we used was the same uh, group of plugins, and it's the tool rack. I'm going to move this. So basically it's a combination of a whole bunch of stomp boxes. We can go through and mute them or turn them off um, and mess with this plugin. So you can definitely use, what I love about presets is you can create them, I mean use them, and then tweak them. It gives you a great starting point, I think. Um, but this specific plugin not only has the stomp boxes, but you've got all these different amps. And you're like, what the heck is that? And again, it's just drive bass. Just pretend it's a physical amp and you're turning the knobs. And this is where you can just go through and say, I want cream. I don't have any idea what that is. But just change the knobs, listen to it, and if it sounds good to you, it's right. Uh, then you've got your tuner built in, and then here's all your presets. So this is what we use for that pad guitar sound. And on this sound, we're gonna, I'm just going to show you how to create from scratch. We're going to go to Insert, Plug-in on the new guitar track. We're going to go to Harmonic. And you see all these different choices. Basically, you just go to them and check it out. But I'm going to take a four stomp box, and it's going to give us a blank slate with um, all the different um, stomp boxes ready to be loaded. And that's what this little triangle is. And I can say, hey, give me... Give me a lady, if only it could be that easy. Um, I'm going to make sure this track on input is set to the input of the track I'm using, just to see what this sounds like. I'm going to look at my chart. I'm going to make sure this is coming out over here. So everybody's hearing it. Oh, so a lady. I got to check my tuning. That's where the tool rack would have been coming come in handy, but I've got my handy tuner. Uh, so ladies got a little bit too much delay, a little too much stuff going on. Uh, I say no on lady. But just so you can get the gist here, we can say, hey, give me an overdrive. <laughs> bugging me but we can go through say hey give me overdrive here give me a phaser a phaser here give me some reverb here and then you can drag them around and move the order what if the phaser instead of the overdrive came first and then what if the reverb went here it changes the sound you can tell uh, in the interest of time I'm going to just go grab a preset and something Boom. Okay. Good enough from now. I'm going to turn it down. The other thing I'm going to do is turn down my vocal because I really want to hear more. I'm going to bring up the drums a little bit. 
maybe bring up the click a little bit, bring this down a little bit, bring my vocal down. My vocal is just going to kind of barely be in there to give me a guide. Um, and I think we're kind of ready. I never overthink what I'm going to record. If I sat here and I practiced and perfected, it, I would never get anything down recorded. So me, I name my track, I put it in record, I find a decent sound. Nothing is etched in stone. If it doesn't sound perfect, you can come back and perfect it. The thing is, when you're in a creative groove, when you're writing and when you're singing and when you're recording, that's a separate mindset than in technical, change the sounds, edit the drums, for me. So when I'm in a groove and I'm feeling musical or if, or if I'm in a groove writing a song, I stay in that groove and um, I nurture those moments uh, as much as I can. And the best way I've found is not to get mired in being a perfectionist, not to get mired in all of the technical crap and the perfect plug-in and the perfect sound. Um, learn to be disciplined with what kind of mindset you're in. If you're in a tweak drum mode, then go with it. But sometimes you can be in a creative groove and then get down in the rabbit hole of technical stuff. And it, uh, it's, it's a hard thing to learn how to balance, but just something to keep in mind. And there is your lecture for the day. Pro Tools on a Soapbox. Um, so I'm just, I'm not even going to think about what I'm going to play. I'm just going to do something in the key of C. I want a pick. Where, there's my pick. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at this uh, chart over here. I'm going over here to this track. I'm going to say save, and I'm going to put it in record, and I'm just going to go for it. Okay, last note before I start recording, I swear I'm going to shut up and play this damn thing, um, is I'm a big believer in less is more. Again, you can have as many playlists and you can play as busy as you want and have a sparse playlist and play little as you want. But in general for me, I try to think of the big picture and I wanna leave space for maybe a piano. Uh, we definitely gotta put bass, uh, maybe some cool background vocals. And if I've got all this, um, you know, whatever, um, and I've got all this stuff going on under the vocal, it's not going to leave any room for stuff that I want to add. So with that in mind, I'm going to play this part, whatever the heck happens. Here we go. highlighted I gotta make sure I'm in quick punch uh, and quick punch again make sure that whatever pre-roll you have set it's recording during that time so it'll make sense when you want to do crossfades if you weren't recording you couldn't crossfade anything because there's nothing to crossfade again don't worry if it doesn't make sense right now just go for it click where you want to punch in make sure you have pre-roll on make sure you have quick punch on it's right here and it's also under the options menu quick punch all right, I'm going to punch right there and at the top of the verse. I'm going to also, while I'm thinking about it, bring up the drums a little bit and bring up the vocal just a teeny bit. bit. And right there, I'm going to click and punch in, and here we go. One more time. Okay, this always 
this happens to me, and I'm like, what the hell? I want to punch in right where I stopped. I don't know what it is that I do all the time, but I always turn on this little box right here. It's called Insertion mm -hmm. Follows Playback. It drives me nuts. And what it does is it makes your mouse start from where you stopped. Not good. Especially when you're recording, because most likely you want to punch in at the same spot. You don't want it to start recording where you stopped. Um, so if that ever happens and you're like, where was my mouse doing what it's doing? Most likely it's this dumb little box up here called Insertion Follows Playback. Um, i got to figure out what shortcut I'm hitting that always turns it on. Markers. Of course, one, I know I want to punch in right there. I know it's an E minor. So I. I'm going to do save and probably I would keep this playlist do another playlist until I felt like I had a part that I really liked I'm not crazy about this part um, in the next video we're gonna mess with this part maybe add some plugins make it sound a little better and then we're gonna put down a bass and then we're gonna use some loop recording to do some vocal parts uh, so hang in there and I'll be back